Because of that is on the bike. So biking has become such a significant part of professional triathlon and more and more the, the sort of my small um, marginal gains that you can make on the bike make a massive impact on the race results. Brad Weiss is one of my athletes and during this specific phase he is in right now, he's going to be doing four times four minute intervals. Um, these intervals are performed at very low cadences. This is a session that is particularly efficient performing it indoors. Uh, what he will be doing is simply cranking up his resistance so that he can hit the desired wattage at the desired RPM. I'm going to be prescribing these intervals at between 45 and 55 RPM. My coach has prescribed a pretty specific session for today. We'll do about a 30 minute warm up, just at kind of spinning um, about 90 cadence, try and get the heart rate up a little bit, a few pickups, and then the main session. It's almost like a strength-based um, session where we increase the power and the nice thing with the Wahoo Kicker is that I can control the power or the resistance on the, on the head unit. I'm currently using the Wahoo Roam um, head unit and the display is really nice and big so even mid-interval I can change the resistance of the trainer and uh, make sure that my cadence and my power sits in the zones prescribed. The idea is to have a really low cadence so I'll slow my cadence down to something about here, but the resistance, I'll increase the resistance of the trainer to um, make sure I hit that 340 watt power output. And it almost becomes like a gym session. Try and keep your upper body really stable and really just grind into that gear. Um, it allows for a lot of muscle recruitment. You can engage your glutes, your quads, hamstrings, and really, engage all those cycling specific muscles and having that really high torque and power output it translates really well into probably two or three weeks time we'll transition over into some higher vo2 max work and when you've got that ability to recruit all the muscles in your legs um, it really translates well so today will be a pretty grinding session your heart rate stays relatively low through the session but maybe climb up to for me between 160 and 170 heart rate um, and yeah having a tool like the Wahoo Kicker really makes a, a massive difference and to professional athletes I think it's a get complete game changer. If he had to do this specific session outdoors uh, there's obviously the risk of um, being interrupted uh, by the environment, by cars or people around you or simply not having a hill steep enough. Being able to put out the power required at a very low cadence, you need a very steep hill. Um, this is another reason why simply doing it on the kicker is more efficient or maybe more efficient. With me switching from Xterra, which is on a mountain bike, to the Ironman distance, which is done on a time trial bike, I can stay in my time trial bars, really focus on that aero position. Sometimes I'll get a mirror in front of me, just really dial in that position and focus to try and make sure I'm as aerodynamic as possible while still producing the power that I'll need on race day. So all of those factors considered, I think using the indoor training is such a great tool, um, but having that good combination I think is the key to a happy and healthy athlete. If you're doing a lot of your training indoors, make sure that your bicycle is set up correctly. You can be prone to injury because you are sitting in exactly the same position for prolonged periods. In the last five years we've seen a huge jump in terms of the technology that we're riding on from just having normal wheel-on trainers to direct drive trainers right through to smart trainers now. Smart training has now become the name of the game. Obviously we need the hardware and then there's these various uh, software vendors that have programs that you now use to train which have made training very, very, very interactive and it's a great way to train to use their programs and to improve your cycling.
We've seen an explosion in indoor training since COVID-19. Lockdown obviously contributed to that. And if you just have a look in general, people have been made billionaires. I talk about Peloton, for instance, uh, where it's a subscription where you've got your spinning class in your home, and then you've got the guys who still want to do their training using their own indoor trainers. And what has happened now is there's communities uh, using, for instance, programs like Zwift, Ruby, Full Gas, but the big one being Zwift, the big one being able to race against each other and also to ride with one another. So it's these software platforms that have also created the growth in indoor cycling. Before we had a lot of people who'd rather ride outside. With the software, it's become far more interactive, it's become far more fun. It's just not a mindless task anymore where you're sitting on this trainer, sweating it out in the garage or a pain cave. Your friends are interacting with you. So when starting off five, five, ten years ago, we all used what we call wheel-on trainers. That is where we don't take the bike apart. We literally put the whole bike onto uh, the trainer itself and clip in the back wheel. That, has a, that creates the resistance against the tire, and that would be your entry-level trainer. What's happened since then is we've moved to direct drive trainers. That's where we remove the back wheel and we actually put the bike, it has its own, the trainer has its own cassette and flywheel and we put the bike onto that. The direct drive trainers are far more accurate. The big advantage of these direct drive trainers is they're quiet. That has been one of the big improvements in terms of indoor trainers, is noise reduction. If you're looking at training in front of your family while they're all watching TV, etc, etc, you can do this with a direct drive trainer. If we have a look at the Wahoo family of products, they're always striving to improve. Last year, just after COVID, we got the first of the new Wahoo kicker bike. It's an exceptional piece of equipment and it's fully integratable with Zwift. It has amazing capabilities. It has a built-in climb module, so it tilts backwards and forwards. It's also got a nice little bit of sway. And then you would ride it like a normal bike where your shifters and your gears are all here. And this is like electronic shifting on a normal bike. Although being a bit pricey, the nice thing about this bike is if you've got a family and they all want to use this bike, it's easily adjustable, like a bike in the gym, for instance. You can adjust crank length, you can adjust the height, you can adjust the length, everything. So it's completely custom customizable for each member of your family. So the other trainer I'm going to talk about is the Kicker Core. That's the first in the line direct drive offering. From there you would go to the new Kicker 5. In terms of just getting started, that is my sort of starting point for most of my customers. The nice thing about the indoor market now is it's become affordable for everybody. Smart trainers start at around about 6,000 Rand and what I mean by smart is that it then can interact with software just in terms of your tiers, is how, how much do you want to spend? So there is a price point for literally everybody to get into it. Trainers can go all the way up to 75, 80,000 Rand, depending on what you want. The nice thing about certain brands is they actually have add-ons for their trainers. One of the bigger brands that we sell is Wahoo, and they have a fantastic range of product from wheel-on trainers through direct drive trainers to an actual standalone bike. Um, but what they really do well is that they complete the environment for you. So there are various add-ons that work with all of their trainers, especially the later generation stuff. You have a product called the Kicker Climb that you would take out your front wheel, you would replace it with the Kicker Climb and that will now uh, lift the nose of the bike so you will undulate as per what's happening on your screen. So if you're climbing up a hill in Zwift for instance and it is a 5% gradient then the climb will move up 5%. It also goes negative so if you're going downhill you'll feel like you're riding downhill. Another great product offering from Kicker is their headwind fan. Uh, it is a little bit on the pricey side but if you have a look at all the features that it comes with where it connects to your heart rate belt. So for those guys who are tired of leaning down and turning on a fan, turning it off because it's cold, etc. You can set it according to your heart rate. So once my heart rate hits a certain percentage, the fan must turn on. And once I'm going full gas, the, the fan must be blowing full speed. For instance, in Zwift, you're doing 30 k's an hour, it's blowing a bit harder, 55 k's an hour, it blows even harder to give you a sort of real feel. One of the big tips just in terms of indoor training, when you're finished, uh, obviously we all have a huge sweat towel, etc. What I like to do is I have a little spray bottle with some sunlight soap, very, very uh, mild mixture. I just spray down either my bike or if I'm riding the Wahoo bike, I spray it down and I just wipe it down gently. These bikes are prone to rust in terms of your sweat. You need to look after them.